Hello, I'm Cherise Speller, the chairperson for the Greenville Pit Public Access Television, commonly known as GPAT. Thank you for joining us today in our citizenship series. Today we're talking to North Carolina House Representative Candy Smith, who represents the state's 8th district, which includes Pitt County. Uh, Candy was elected to serve her first term mm -hmm. in the North Carolina House of Representatives in November 2018 and was re-elected to the second term in November. Before serving in the House of Representatives, Candy served as the first black female mayor of the city of Greenville and spent nearly a decade as the councilwoman for Greenville City Council District C1. Welcome Representative Smith. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for joining us in this program. We want to encourage those who may be thinking about running for office uh, and even serving on local boards and commissions just to give them an idea of what your experience has been like and to give them some encouragement to jump into that arena if they so desire. So my first question is, what motivated you to run for office that very first time? <laughs> Um, what motivated me is I had friends who encouraged me to do it because they noticed my advocacy in the community and they stated to me, you're already working. You will be great to be in that role. And not knowing really much about um, being in an elected position because I had never been in one, I said, well, how long is the term? What are they expected to do? I asked those questions. And then I begin to do my research. So I begin watching um, city council meetings so that I could see what they talked about, listening to the concerns of the citizens because um, the, the whole job was to make sure that you represented the citizens. So with that being the case, I, I did my pre-work. Right. Um, and one of the things I did was I did join a board and commission. Mm -hmm. A board, when we talk about boards and commissions, I joined the neighborhood liaison board. And um, in that board, I, on that board, I got a chance to work with a lot of other people and talk about what the issues were for the different neighborhoods mm -hmm. in the community. So that was like really close to the people hands on. And um, I was on that board when I ran for the District 1 seat. And so um, that helped me to give me some experience of just about meeting with people, collaborating with people, looking at what the issues are, how we can possibly address those, and then um, moving forward from there. But once I announced, guess what? I attended every city council meeting mm -hmm. and I sat in the audience and I listened because I needed to learn. Right. So boards and commissions, do you think that would be a, a good first step for someone who might be aspiring for mm -hmm. more one day? Um, the reason why I think that's a good um, first step is because many people have fear about running for office. Mm -hmm. And I've heard people ask me, what does it take and how did you run? And guess what? Like I said, I ran because someone said, I think you'd be good as an advocate because you do that now. You should run. I knew nothing about it. So there's no prerequisite besides being able to breathe. Right. <laughs> you know, um, making sure you're of age. I tell people I think it's at least 18 or older. And um, have a love for your community. Mm -hmm. But what the commission does, it, it gives you that opportunity to interact with others from different perspectives. And you come together and you identify what the issues are. Um, whether it's uh, park and recs or uh, whether it's planning and zoning, a board of adjustments, you can be in those um, commission meetings and or committee meetings and board meetings and talk to each other and um, then you make decisions on issues and then you send those recommendations to the council. Right. So just with that, it kind of gives you um, a taste mm -hmm. of what it's about. And the county has um, boards and commissions as well as the city. So sometimes people are wondering, well, how can I get on? It's so many out there. Mm -hmm. And the thing that we talk about the most is the lack of people volunteering to be on these boards. Right. So anybody who wants to have their voice heard or wants to um, see what's happening in the community, I would encourage them to look into it. Awesome. So when you decided to run, what was your strategy in getting elected? Um, what kinds of things did you put in place? Did you? Uh, what kind of people did you gather around you to mm -hmm. help you um, in that effort? When I first decided to run, the first thing I had to identify was a campaign manager. Mm -hmm. So I spoke with my campaign manager, and um, my campaign manager is, was a true strategist and stated to me, if you're going to run and I'm going to be your um, manager, 
I have a list of individuals I need you to um, have a personal one-on-one -on -one meeting with. You need to interview people. You need to talk to people who've been in that position mm -hmm. to ask them um, what does it entail so that you'll know what to expect. If you do that, I don't mind being your manager. I said, cool. So that was a preparation because in talking to those different individuals, they gave me a lot of insight mm -hmm. of what to expect on the board and what my expectations were being an elected official. And, and I was really appreciative of, the, of that. Um, but after that, just identifying my campaign manager, identify, I identified people who supported me and who were like-minded, who thought like me. And they knew that I had a passion for helping people. And um, in knowing that, they said, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we got together on the team and when we had our meetings, what we did was we identified what everybody was good at. Because right. you have some people good at social media, you have some people good at maybe writing speeches and prepping um, people for speeches and debates and mm -hmm. uh, we have some, some other people who might be good at um, writing different things that need to be um, written and passed on t or whatever or some, somebody maybe on policy and looking at what the policy issues um, are currently. So I just kind of had someone who was good at different things, somebody with event planning because we had to have different events to get people to meet, well, who is Candy Smith? So um, I, I just got people who are like-minded like and we started meeting and just went from there. So how did you decide uh, where you would fall on a particular issue, the kinds of things that uh, would be part of your platform? Well, number one, we as a team when, with my committee, we started talking about those things that were big issues already in the community. And that happens when you listen to what people are complaining about. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go to social media, you hear what right. people are, are complaining about. If you're um, in the community and you, you listen to people and hear things, you hear what the number one um, thing is. A lot of times in the newspaper, you see articles about it because people are concerned or complaining. Sometimes on television, you hear about it. And so um, looking at what those issues were, we agreed as a team what would probably be, um, be best to be my top issues. And we considered the district that I lived in. So every district might have different issues. Mm -hmm. they, we might have some things that might be uh, a cross-reference, but other things may be more prevalent in one district versus another. Mm -hmm. And living in um, District 1, housing was, you know, is like right now is a big thing. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at where you live. And we, we identified what, what was some of those top things. And of course, economics, jobs was one of them. I can definitely tell you that. Um, making sure that we, we dealt with crime and, and how that was handled. So we, we identified what my platform issues were and then I went from there. So um, did you, in listening to the various views that people gave you, how do you decide um, you know, where you come down? Because I'm sure that people have, you know, as many people, you have that many views. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have opposing views. Mm -hmm. this, this is what I do. I tell them I, I, I vote my conscience. These are when people ask me, how do you vote? I vote my conscience. I vote the wishes of the people. And then I vote, like especially now being in the House, according, according to my, my party. Right. But I vote according to my party last only because if uh, my conscience and the will of the people happens to be opposite of the, of the party, mm -hmm. then I'm voting the way my conscience and the will of the people. Right. So um, I, I vote in that order. Now what I do is even if someone vote or has a different idea or opinion than I do, I listen to them though. That's how you learn. Mm -hmm. um, I, if everybody thought alike, what kind of world would we be in? Right. And when you get your best ideas is when you have people who don't think like you. Mm -hmm. And um, you come together and you collaborate and you have different opinions and ideas and how we can make it happen. And you make it a win-win for everybody mm -hmm. as much as possible. You're never gonna have everybody 100% satisfied with everything you say and do. Right. But what you're doing is, is looking at the feedback that you have received and you work from there. Uh, what are your goals or hopes for this kind of polarized situation we are in politically with you know Democrats and Republicans and others, I guess? Um, hmm. Well, my goal is to make sure that people are educated. Mm -hmm. I think that's the main thing. Whether you're a Democrat, Republican, Independent, to me it really does not matter. Mm -hmm. um, I think that education is, is the key because first people need to be educated on what we do at every level of government, whether that's been on the board of a commission or whether that's being on the school board, whether that's been on the board of election, whether that's being on a county commission, whether that's being on the city council or at the state level, mm -hmm. uh, being a representative of the state. 
um, or some other elected official at the state level, governor, lieutenant governor, or whether that's being on the federal level, being a congressman or woman, or being in the Senate. We just have to, or even running for president or vice president. Right. So we have to first be educated. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, that means learn what each level is responsible for doing. Mm -hmm. What people don't know is that local politics affects you more than on the national level. Right. And I know we have a lot going on on the national level because that gets the most press. Mm -hmm. But having a personal curfew, that's closer to home. Mm -hmm. Having um, your streets maintained, mm -hmm. that's at home. Um, figuring out what happens with your your police department, what happens with your um, parks and, and recreation, what happens with, you know, all those different things that you touch every day. Mm -hmm. That's all on the local level. Right. And I think we have people who get so involved in voting in the national election for the president, vice president, so on and so forth. They forget about the um, off elections is what we call those, mm -hmm. but the uh, who's going to represent you locally, who's going to be your city council, who's going to be your mayor, right. who's going to be your county commissioners and, and say where the funds go in the county and, and for the schools, mm -hmm. who's going to be your school board members that talk about opening those schools or closing those schools during um, issues of COVID or, or who's going to be supporting your kids. Mm -hmm. We forget about those things until issues happen right. and then people get upset. And then they say, what do we do? Many times I get those calls and I have to redirect people to where they should go. Mm -hmm. So I think shows like this is a start because it's education. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing of knowing where do I go if I have this issue? Right. Where do I go if I have that issue? Mm -hmm. So if we identify those things, people, the more they learn and the more educated they become, the more people get involved. Right. And they're less intimidated. Exactly. And knowing that, you know, the school board is not under the city of Greenville. <laughs> right. But under Pitt County and those kinds of things. So Absolutely. That, um, you can get your questions answered. Uh, so what has been the hardest part about being an elected official? Getting citizen involvement. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the reason why I can say that so easily is because um, many people expect me to represent them, but I don't always hear their voices. Right. And I've heard people say, well, she know what we want. Well, how can I know what you want if you don't share with me what you want? Mm -hmm. And so I tell people you can do it by making phone calls to the office. You can write emails. Um, and now we have this social media. Everybody uses social media. Right. So I have now a lot of people who message me mm -hmm. on my um, representative Candy Smith page. They'll send me a message and ask a question. And then I'll direct the question. Some, some questions are not questions that's answered in my office, mm -hmm. but we direct them where they need to go. So um, I just, I, I, citizen engagement mm -hmm. is the key. Mm -hmm. And I encourage people to get involved as much as possible. Sometimes I tell people, just get a part of a campaign and work on the, um, on the person's um, committee. Right. And if you work on their committee and you see what it takes to, to run for office, that opens your eyes to the opposite side. Right. Because everything is not always as it seems. Mm -hmm. uh, so what would you say has been the most enjoyable part? The most enjoyable is being able to um, have wins. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, um, thinking about wins that we've had in our community. We've just completed the Town Creek Culvert mm -hmm. here in Greenville. Mm -hmm. That was a huge project. It was, it was uh, flooding right. in the uptown area all the time. Restaurants, all, it was just horrible. I remember getting out of city council meetings and we would have to sometimes roll up our um, pants legs because we were going to have to walk in the water to get to our cars. That was just not good. Mm -hmm. And so we knew that drainage system needed to be fixed. I had no idea that it was as bad as, I mean, we didn't, I didn't know we had tunnels underground like they have in New York. Right. I just didn't know that because if you don't see it, it's out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things I was able to do as mayor, um, I went to the state at that time and spoke with, um, it was Secretary Michael Regan, Regan at the time, who's been tapped by the Biden administration now. Mm -hmm. um, I spoke with him and um, Senator Davis and his staff and advocated for a green grant for us to start on our project. Mm -hmm. And um, we had no idea if we were gonna get that grant, but as the mayor, I, I went with staff and public works and our city manager and we advocated for it. Mm -hmm. We did not feel like it was gonna be um, something that we got because the pushback that we received was not positive at the time right. and we didn't s receive things that were making us feel like we would get it. And then the meeting um, was going to be about five months later. Mm -hmm. So you never know what happens. And so we left and we said we did the best that we could. Right. And uh, then five months later, they had the meeting 
and we had our fingers crossed because we knew the date of the meeting, but we didn't know what the board would decide. And the board decided to give us the grant. Mm -hmm. And um, I was extremely excited because as the mayor, I was able to help um, lead the progress in saving the city $9.2 million, mm -hmm. which is probably the most that's um, happened at one time. And I was only the mayor for five months, right. but I believed in working for the people. And issues like that, that was a very big issue. Mm -hmm. So that's what I consider rewarding right. because we had to come together. We had to meet um, with another entity, which was the state, and um, lay out what the issues were and, and tell them how serious it was. And then it happened. And I later had a chance to speak with the secretary. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he shared with me was, um, you know, one of the reasons why you, you guys received that grant is because your passion for your city. Right. And if you had not come and had that same passion and you knew it up and down, mm -hmm. you might not have been able to get that grant. And I was like, wow, I was right. floored. Because, right. I mean, I knew I was there to represent the city, mm -hmm. but sometimes you don't know the impact that you make until you make it. Mm -hmm. And so just recently, <clears throat> we were able to complete that project and they had um, a ribbon cutting mm -hmm. down by the bridge mm -hmm. and the current mayor um, gave us the, the picture that had the whole project that was taking place. Mm -hmm. And so I, I got a chance to be able to see that because sometimes your work starts at one mm -hmm. level, but you might not be able to see that completion being in that position. Right. But it was okay for me mm -hmm. because I knew I did the work for us to get the grant. That's what was most important. Mm -hmm. um, but I was excited that it, it completed ahead of time. Mm -hmm which was awesome yes. um, with, without any major issues. Mm -hmm. And I'm, st I'm still living in Greenville and, and still able to be able to see the completion mm -hmm. and to you know, get that um, plaque which had pictures of what it looks like and what it w was looking like you know, going through the project. That's rewarding. Yes, so is. that's always a win. And it doesn't always have to be wins that big. Mm -hmm. That was $9.2 million that was big. Sometimes it's small wins mm -hmm. when someone's able to say, you know what, I appreciate you. I called you and they called me back. Right. And major. Right. <laughs> and, and I think that's probably more major to many people than the Town Creek Culvert. Because mm -hmm. imagine how many people have no idea what that is. Right. But, but those people who say, I called and you called back. Mm -hmm. Or I called and someone called me and answered my question. Mm -hmm. you, you actually helped me. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate that. Those are wins for me. Mm -hmm. I've had people say, I never knew I could talk to an elected official. And I'm like, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. At the top are the, the people. We work for you. Right. It's like, well, we don't know it like that because many people get in these positions and they don't want to talk to us mm -hmm. or they don't return phone calls or they just do what they want to do and we don't you know, get a chance to interact with them. Right. So I always tried to hold town hall meetings mm -hmm. to accommodate the people. Mm -hmm. And now we have social media and things of that nature. That's the best way. Right. There's no excuse now why no one is having town hall meetings. Right. When I was doing the budget at the state, I had a town hall meeting. Mm -hmm. What do y'all want me to do on the budget? Mm -hmm. So we can reach people now that we couldn't reach before because we're now right in their homes. Right. We're on their phones. Mm -hmm. We're on their iPads, on their computers. Mm -hmm. So um, the biggest win is just getting people involved and having those small wins and letting people know that they really matter because mm -hmm. each person matters and they can be a part of the solution if they participate. Right. Uh, what kind of wins, small or large, are you hoping for, you know, fairly soon? Well, some of the wins I'm hoping for is, is citizen engagement. I want people to get involved. Mm -hmm. um, and so what, what I'm doing now is, is doing my best to try to educate people and educate them on all those things that are out there. So mm -hmm. I'm currently teaching a class on engaging your community. Mm -hmm and that's understanding politics. Right. And I've had people say, I just never knew that that's what that sign meant, or mm -hmm. I never knew that's what that meant or this meant. And their eyes have now been open. Mm -hmm. um, and I wish someone had shared that information with me because I would have gotten involved sooner. Right. I think many people get involved later in life because they begin to learn over a period of time. Mm -hmm. I think we should start with teaching and training our kids mm -hmm. and letting them know what everything is all about, what advocacy is about, those things that they feel important and how they should fight for those things. Right. And if we do that, then we have people getting involved a whole lot sooner. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't be that we just waited for years and didn't know what to do. Right. So I just, uh, a win for me is to continue to teach people. And that's anybody who asks me questions. I help them out. I give them any answer. I, I tell them where they could go. Mm -hmm. And I get calls all the time, even from students at um, ECU mm -hmm. in their classes. They call me and say, can I talk with you? Can we meet? Can we do this? Mm -hmm. I just. Um, 
return an email today. Mm -hmm. um, one of the students from Chapel Hill mm -hmm. wants to have a meeting, mm -hmm. and I was, and they're from this area, and right. they attend Chapel Hill. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm, I'm going to always um, interact with them, talk to them, and, and give them all the information that I have, because mm -hmm. I like teaching people. Right. I like passing along information. Right. Uh, so what advice would you give to others considering um, public service, hmm. considering running for office? <laughs> What advice would you give them? But look, let me think. Hmm. <laughs> let me tell you the first thing I'll really say. Just do it. Uh -huh. um, if I did it, they can do it. Mm -hmm. I don't consider myself being anybody special. I'm, I'm just like the next person. Mm -hmm. What I did was I took that chance. Um, you may not always be successful the first time, but that does not mean that you give up. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in something and you have a concern, you let's say you've been concerned about your, your, your child mm -hmm. and they're in school and all these changes that's happened since COVID and what's happening and how is it affecting you? Why would you not decide to, to run for the school board? Mm -hmm. If you contact your representative and they're not responsive or you don't feel like that they're doing what you would like for them to do and other people are um, expecting them to do, or maybe they are, but you just want to be a part of that process. Mm -hmm. Consider running. Mm -hmm. Get some people who are like-minded and who want to help you with that process, and I say just do it. Mm -hmm. Because if you never take that first step, you're not going to take that second step. Right. And so in order for me to be in the seat that I'm in now and at the state level and um, 12, 13 years now into um, politics, I had to start. Right. And if I never started, I wouldn't have um, had be, be at this point right now. Mm -hmm. So I just, I took that step. I was apprehensive. Mm -hmm. I was nervous. I was scared. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. My mother made me register to vote at 18. Right. I did what she said. Right. Me too. When it, was <laughs> when it was time to go to, right. to for elections, especially presidential, uh -huh. I mean, she took me with her. Uh -huh. And that was the first thing of her teaching me. Mm -hmm. But I can't say I ever sat down and watched a city council meeting when I was growing up. Right. Um, I can't say I never paid attention to county commissioners and what they did, mm -hmm. board of elections. I didn't know about those things. I didn't pay attention. Mm -hmm. I learned in school about the legislative branch, mm -hmm. judicial branch, executive branch. Mm -hmm. You learn about that, but you really don't understand about how to apply it unless you get involved. Right. Now I know because mm -hmm. I'm part of the legislative branch um, at the state house. Mm -hmm. So I do now know what it's about. Mm -hmm. But the more you know, the more you are... Um, I think the more confident people will be to run. Right. So that's why I tell individuals just get involved. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of it is, you know, the council meetings and the commissioner meetings mm -hmm. are aired um, on their uh, public access channels. Yes. So uh, you can go back and look at it if you missed it. Yep. Um, and so that's the wonderful thing about technology is that, mm -hmm. you know, if you can't be there because you're putting your children to bed or what have you, you can go back and look at it on your own time. Absolutely. So that helps out a whole lot. Because it's online, too. Yes. Because you, yes. you, you can go back That's online right. and you can actually put the date in of the meeting you want to watch mm -hmm. and watch that meeting. Mm -hmm. Whether it's county commissioner, whether it's school board, mm -hmm. whether it's city council, you can do that. And a lot of the boards and commissions, too, they mm -hmm. have those meetings online. And mm -hmm. um, so that provides greater access for people. There you go. You know, to know what's going on and to learn and to engage themselves. Well, we thank you so much. Any lasting um or uh, last comments or thoughts while, before we close up? Well, I'll say first, I think that this is an awesome um, opportunity for people to um, pay attention mm -hmm. and, and start learning about those things that affect them. Right. I often have this term and this, this statement that I say, mm -hmm. if you're not at the table helping to make those decisions, you're often the one on the menu. Right. And I never want to be in a situation where they're talking about me, but I don't have a part in how that what that outcome could be. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's why I like to be active and be at the table. Mm -hmm. And I do that with so many things because I do a lot of reading. And when I see um, things that are issues or concerns, I start doing research. Mm -hmm. I start saying, well, well, let me figure this out. Let me figure that out. And when people say, well, how do you do research? Sometimes you can just Google things. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, everybody has that access. Right. right. Um, and when you Google and stuff start coming up, you start mm -hmm. seeing, well, who is the person I would talk to. You see if it's at the federal level, if it's at the um, state level, or if it's at the city level, whether it's county mm -hmm. or um, whatever is at the local level. And then you start asking questions. Mm -hmm. if, you, if it's county, you can um, go and talk to the county, any county commissioner or maybe the county manager right. and say, how do I deal with this? Mm -hmm. If it's at, um, at the local level at the city, you can call the city manager and mm -hmm. say, how do I deal with this? Mm -hmm. Because there's a staff mm -hmm. that is over each department and you can always call them. 
and they can give you information. They can help answer your questions. So I, I encourage people, do not be afraid to ask questions. Mm -hmm. No question is a dumb question. Right. And when you start asking questions, you find out more information than you ever anticipated that you could find out. That's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people just, they don't do that. They'll ask among themselves in that group, but then they won't go out and, and ask those individuals who can really affect them. Right. So when I have people calling me and saying, what do I do about this? And some people now, because they know I am in an elected position, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what this situation or issue is, they'll still come to me right. because they know I'll lead them in the right direction. Right. He'll get I, it answered. There yeah. you go. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I'll encourage people to get involved, mm -hmm. um, educate yourself. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, my representative, Candy Smith, Facebook page, just message me. Or even sometimes on my personal Facebook page, people message me. Mm -hmm. I'll do everything I can to return um, the message. Call, they can always call my office in Raleigh. Um, I, I'll do everything I can to try to answer. Mm -hmm. now, am I perfect and will make every single call and Probably not. That's why I tell people sometimes you might have to call again mm -hmm. just to, you know, make sure. But I have an office assistant who is on it. Yes, he is. He is on it. He responded to us very quickly. We were very excited about that. <laughs> he so. is on it. Um, coming from journalism and being um, a reporter himself here um, in, in Greenville, he was with WITN. So he's mm -hmm. he's very well aware of, of um, research and reading things right. a lot and, and staying up on top of things. So. Mm -hmm. I, I encourage other people to do that. And he likes to teach. Mm -hmm. So when, when things happen, he said, you know what, we need to make sure people know about this. Right. So that's why if you look at my Facebook post, you'll see mm -hmm. that we try to post a lot of information that affects people. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about COVID-19 and this vaccine, and mm -hmm. people are asking the question about um, what stage are we with the vaccine? What uh, we stage one, stage two, stage three, where do I fall? Right. I, I post all those things on my representative um, page because mm -hmm. I want people to know where they fall. Right. And then if they have questions, people ask me and I get additional information for them. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest things people are asking now is about equity right. in the community. And, it, and we start looking at it, you hear equity, it used to be about equality. Well, when you look at equality, you give everybody the same thing. Mm -hmm. You look at equity, you want everybody to have an equal outcome. Right. And I think we're more so looking at what equity looks right. like now, but we want everybody to have a chance to have the same playing field right. to um, try to get things done. Mm -hmm. So I just, um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna continue, continue to encourage people, get involved. Mm -hmm. There's no reason not to. That's just like going and coach, coaching your kid's baseball team or mm -hmm. basketball team or whatever. Mm -hmm. Get involved right. on any level. Mm -hmm. And you don't always have to be an elected official. Right. And that I just want people to know that you don't always have to be that one, but you can always still be a part of that process mm -hmm. and be on those boards and commissions. And not all of them are even televised because right. some people are afraid. Oh, my gosh, being on TV, whatever. If you're doing <laughs> Facebook Live, right? That's right. And you're on there with your friends. Look at me. And uh -huh. you're doing the same thing. What's That's the difference? Right. <laughs> so I think we're breaking people in early. Uh -huh. So <laughs> yes, they should are. probably be less apprehensive. Right. So I just say keep doing things like this that you guys are doing. Keep educating people. Um, keep encouraging people to get involved. That would be just the, the, the biggest thing for me. And I'm going to do everything I can to assist. And if there's anything I can to um, help you in the process with this series or answer any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Well, we didn't hesitate, and you did answer our call, and we appreciate it so much. Thank you, Representative no problem. Smith, for being a part of our citizenship, citizenship program series. i got to practice that word. Um, and for being here today to help people who may have, you know, just needed those answers. Mm -hmm. How can I get involved? Thank you so much for doing that. No problem. And uh, if you're interested in sponsoring one of our series um, uh, on citizenship, please don't hesitate to contact us on our Facebook page, our email address, um, any way you can reach us, and we'll be glad to assist you in helping us extend this wonderful program. Thank you so much for your time and for being with us for our citizenship series. Thank you so much.